Hello and welcome back to Ready Study Free From. Yes, I've taken quite a big break. Uh, I've had some life events go on that have uh, put me in grief and put me also into a flare. And so um, it's just been a tough ride. And so I took a break and now I'm back. So I am excited to be back. And today we are going to be cooking a recipe out of the Breaking the Vicious Cycle book. You see mine's quite battered, um, so it's been around a while. We're going to be making apple custard pie and that is on page 135. Now I'm going to do about half the mixture, um, but you'll see as it comes together my, the adjustments that I've made. So let's get cooking. We've got all the ingredients ready here. Now I've got three apples here. Now, having been to America, I've seen the size of the apples there. So um, think about that when you're doing apple recipes that are from America, because the apples are one and a half times the size of a UK apple. Uh, they're pretty big. Now I've got relatively small hands and this apple from the UK obviously fits nicely in my hand. Uh, imagine my hand kind of being like that. That might fit an American apple, so lucky Americans. So I've got three apples. Now one of them is a bit disheveled, it's all a bit wrinkly, and that's okay because this has just been sitting in the fridge forgotten about, and so I'm gonna use this in this. You can always use disheveled apples in cooking, they're really good. So they're the three apples that we're going to use. Now in the recipe it says four or five baking apples. Now I am using eating apples, which means we, we need less honey, all right, because they're quite sweet on their own. You could maybe even get away with no honey, but it does add a sweetness to the dish that is really nice. Um, then we are going to be uh, cutting the, peeling and coring and cutting up the apples, popping them in this dish, and I am going to be putting the honey and some lemon in here to toss the um, apples in. So that's where we're gonna get started. So into this bowl, I'm going to put a quarter cup of honey. And then I am going to use, this is a frozen lemon. So what you do is if you feel you're not gonna use your lemons in time or you feel like they're perhaps going a bit past it, you can pop it in the freezer and they're really good. So I'm just going to grate some of this into here, um, looking for around a tablespoonful, but you know, as with me, it's all a bit all over the place with measurements. Right, so we've grated the lemon into there. You can see it in the bowl. Don't worry about the rind uh, making it bitter because it doesn't. It gives this lovely zing to it as you're biting through the apple. So there we go. Okay, so we're just gonna give that a little mix and then we're going to chop and slice the apples. Um, it says in the book to cut them into eighths, but I do them in slices. And then I'm going to use this dish to just pop them in and I'm not going to grease the dish, okay? Now you'll notice that I'm obviously not coring it. I'm chopping around the core. I just prefer to do this. These husks that are in the middle, they're easier to see when you're chopping it up rather than when you're coring. And I hate these husks, they get stuck in my throat. So I really want to make sure I've got them out. So by slicing around the core, for me, it's just easier. If you want to core it, then by all means, go for it and then slice it straight into the bowl. Now you could keep the skins on these if you wanted to. Um, I'm still flaring, so uh, the skins are too hard for me to digest at the moment, so I'm avoiding them. Okay, so we've got those three apples now, all chopped up, sliced up even, and tossed around in the honey and lemon mixture. And we want to make sure we coat them really well. Okay, so we're going to pop these into the bowl now with all the mixture that's in there too. So any leftover liquid, just pop it in there. So now we've spread them evenly around the base, we need to bake them in the oven and we're going to bake them at 400 or 400 Fahrenheit, 200 centigrade um, for 20 minutes. For those of you on gas, that is uh, 
uh, gas mark six and if you've got a fan oven it's 180 on celsius is it celsius or centigrade i don't know whatever it is so we're going to pop those in the oven now so I've just noticed that in the recipe it says to arrange all of the pies, the apple slices nicely. You know me, I don't do that. <laughs> it's all gonna get eaten anyway. So what's the point of making it look pretty because it's not like you're gonna turn it out. Anyway, if you wanna arrange it, have a nice time doing that. I don't bother. So now we're moving on to the three eggs. Now it's okay to use the same bowl that you used for the um, honey and lemon because it's all going to be going in together anyway and it's not going to ruin anything. So we're going to beat the eggs just a little bit and then we're going to add yogurt. So this is dripped yogurt. You can see the consistency is really quite thick. Okay so we've got three quarters of a cup of yogurt. Okay so I'm gonna mix in the yogurt now. Now well, don't worry if it looks a little bit curdled, it's okay, it's gonna to come together. There we go, so it looks, looks a bit like uh, hollandaise sauce maybe, or mayonnaise, but yeah, it's kind of gloopy. Now we are going to add uh, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. It does smell vinegary at this point, but it doesn't taste it when the recipe comes together. Now we're going to grate uh, a little bit of nutmeg. So if you've got ground nutmeg, then that's fine. Just make sure there's no additives to it. Uh, but I've just got fresh uh, nutmeg here, which is just a piece of nutmeg. And I've got a little tiny grater that I got for a present a long time ago for grating chocolate. So I'm going to grate this into this mixture. And really it's about as much as you like. Um, it does say in the recipe a quarter teaspoon, but I like the flavour to kind of go throughout, so I'd probably go for about half a teaspoon if I can be bothered to grate that long. I am also going to put some on the top, so that will add to the flavour as well. And you do have to be careful with nutmeg. If you put an absolute crap load in, <laughs> then uh, you could poison yourself because nutmeg is really quite potent, potent as a spice. And plus, when you put load too much in, it's quite bitter, it's not very nice. You just want that hint. Okay, so I say we've got about a quarter teaspoon in there, and then we're going to put more on the top. So while we're waiting for the uh, apples to cook, we are now going to chop our uh, nuts. So in the recipe, it says, uh, two to three tablespoons of chopped almonds or walnuts. Uh, you can use any nuts really. I've got pecans and um, walnuts here and I think there's probably two, more than two to three tablespoons because it gives a lovely crust on the top. So I'm going to, it's, it's about a handful of nuts really that I've got here, but it's really personal preference. You don't even have to put any nuts on at all. You could just grate nutmeg on. You could even switch the nutmeg for cinnamon and, uh, and sprinkle cinnamon on if you want to. So, and you chop these as finely or as coarsely as you want. So there we have it, the chopped nuts. Uh, they are quite chunky in parts, um, but that's how I like it. Again, this is your personal preference. So we've got the nuts ready for the top. We've got the nutmeg on standby because we're going to put some more of that on top. We've got the mixture ready to go on. Just a thought, if you don't make yogurt or you can't be bothered to make yogurt or you want to make this recipe and you've not made yogurt yet or you don't want to drip it, whatever. If you don't want to wait, I bet pretty much 99% sure you could switch coconut cream for the yogurt. So three quarters of a cup of the solidified part of the can. Um, and, uh, and I bet you could switch it for that easily. So, okay, so we're gonna wait now for the apples to cook and then we're gonna come back. Right, so we've taken out the uh, apples out of the oven. Uh, I left them in a few minutes longer uh, than I should have done and they've just caught a little bit, but they're not burnt, so that's good. 
so they're totally fine. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pour on, so it's hot out of the oven, we're going to pour on this mixture just over the top. I'm just going to spread it over so it covers the apples. There we go. Now we're going to uh, sprinkle over the nuts. And like I said, I really like this nut topping, so I've gone for extra. And then we're going to grate that extra bit of nutmeg on the top. Okay, so we're going to pop it back in the oven now, same temperature, for 10 minutes. I just want to show you actually, um, because I'd never come across this before, um, with doing nutmeg. I saw it at somebody else's house. So this is a nutmeg as they come. And you don't peel it, you don't do anything, you literally just grate it and then the inside, it's got this lovely pattern on the inside. So you literally just buy it like that and then just grate it into tiny pieces. So here it is out the oven. I did leave it in an extra five minutes because I wanted it to firm up a little bit more. So on the, uh, if we touch the top, it's quite firm to touch. There's a little bit of movement there, but we'd expect that because it's, it is a custard. So I have baked it a bit longer and, uh, and it's nice and firm. So I'm now going to dish a bit up for the cheeky taste test, but then I'm gonna let it cool so I don't burn my mouth. Well, don't worry when you open the oven door if it smells like vinegar. It's okay, it's not gonna taste like vinegar. So you can see it's held together quite nicely. So I can just scoop a bit out and you can see the layers there. You've got the custard on the top and the apples on the bottom. So that's what I mean by um, you're not going to see the pattern that you put underneath. Now this is a really lovely pudding to have. You can see there that it's, it's not completely set. It's still soft and a bit runny. It's a really lovely, lovely pudding. And what you can do if, uh, what I do is I put it in the fridge after I've uh, had my portion and, and then I just eat it throughout the days. Now, I reheat it in the microwave, but I know lots of people struggle with using a microwave because they don't like it and that's okay. So what you'd need to do is do yourself a portion and then put it in a, an oven proof container. I'd cover it with foil so it doesn't dry out and pop it in the oven for probably 15 minutes. 20 minutes at about 180, 200, um, just to reheat it. Okay, so I'll let this cool and then we'll do the cheeky taste test. So here we are for the cheeky taste test. By the way, you probably noticed that my sign isn't up on the wall. It fell down um, and kind of went crashing onto the oven. Um, so I've got to stick it back up, that's all. That's why it's down there. So here we go with a lovely portion. See that lovely nut crust on the top? It makes it extra chewy um, because the filling is very soft. So you've got the soft apple, my mouth's watering. The, the, the apples are soft, the custard is soft, and so the nuts just bring another texture to it. And this is still warm. Mm. It's chucking it down with rain today. So there's a lovely warm pudding. It's just delicious. And very comforting. I've got the lovely tang of the apples and the lemons and the, the kick of the vinegar, but you can't taste the vinegar. It's just kind of like a, maybe it's like a little sourness that goes through, but it really lifts it. And then you've got the creaminess of that yogurt. And if you did use coconut um, milk then, or coconut cream, it would bring that coconut flavor to it too. That's lovely. I've been eating a lot of jelly while I've been in my flare. So when I made this last week, it was a real treat. <laughs> so there we go. 
and you could make this Christmassy. You could make a mixed spice. Um, you could use the pumpkin spice. Um, and you could try to play around with the fruit that you use instead of apples. Obviously apples are really good for healing and they're very digestible. But if you're a bit further on and uh, able to cope with other cooked fruit, then go for it. Play around, change the flavors, change the spices and do whatever you want to do with it. So it's great to be back. I will see you next time in the kitchen.